It doesn't take much to spark singing and dancing in Madagascar. But these particular celebrations mark the culmination of five years of hard work and dedication by a community on the country's remote southwest coast. People in the Volondriac locally managed marine area have led the creation of a project now recognized as the largest of its kind anywhere in the world. It's called Tahiri Honko and aims to protect and restore over 1,000 hectares of mangrove forest in the Volondriac, a 600 square kilometer conservation area managed by local communities. Mangroves provide a wide range of benefits. They're staggeringly productive, underpinning fisheries and providing refuge for countless fish and invertebrates. And for people, these blue forests provide a foundation for coastal livelihoods and food security. <laughs> Yet despite their enormous value to coastal people, mangroves are under threat. For those living in poverty in tropical coastal areas, cutting mangroves for fuel or timber is often the only source of income available. And without viable alternatives, there is often no other option than to continue to cut down these forests. But these super trees have one more trick up their sleeve. As they grow, they pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and store it within their roots and soils. As long as mangroves are not cut down, this stored CO2 will be locked away for millennia. carbon <laughs> This simple idea that preserving existing mangrove forests and replanting areas that have been deforested might bring in revenue through the sale of carbon credits was the catalyst the community needed. Matoma tiraha arova, misi tanzuna ten ten ho tsar misi kua tumbutsua zun ten ami. Sai takwa zaluha manumbukunya sako fahuroi tom novembra tuizai e hita fa mihena ti isanudu panimba mi alahungu. Five years on. The project has met rigorous international standards for carbon projects, satisfying experts that the community's work to protect and replant mangroves is effective. This formal validation of the project allows the first carbon credit payments to be made to the community. As well as funding mangrove conservation, this new revenue is being used by the community to improve access to vital services like solar electricity, healthcare, healthcare, education, and education. Arakni vina vina, arakni din 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 juzi, dia hanampia, ani zaza mianati, nad the detsimiana tsuazi, hampia, o hianat, de metifamitunja, zavatohoni, zetsimianati, de hi hampir and the glass, de zazenle, antuni mahatunga, you are satit castahirungu. Mitunza 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And thank you for joining uh, Blue Ventures uh, to Kutelu uh, webinar series. My name is uh, Siselero Kutumahazu, and I am the Blue Forest Coordinator uh, at Blue Ventures Madagascar. So just before we start, we get started, I'm going to give you some technical instructions. So first, uh, it would be great if you introduce yourself uh, using the chat box below and uh, make sure that you select uh, attendees and the panelists so that you uh, they can see you all. Uh, so uh, now, please go ahead and let us know who you are and where are you joining from. Uh, second, uh, I would like everyone just to stay uh, yourself on mute, except the person who presents uh, a presentation. And if you have any questions, please use the YouTube comments if you are watching on YouTube and uh, or use the Q&A box uh, if you are with us in Emmet. And lastly, uh, note that this session will be recorded and the live streamed, but not the case of our breakout session, which will be happening uh, um, in the next. And uh, the record will be sent out uh, afterwards. So if you have any uh, technical issue, please send us an email to digital uh, at blueventures.org. So the topic of uh, today is uh, what does uh, best, best practice in community-led uh, uh, mangrove management look like? So this was uh, uh, chosen to mark uh, the International Day uh, of Mangrove Ecosystem, which was uh, recently celebrated in this week. So mangroves are critical ecosystem for the fisheries production and also support the livelihoods of many coastal people in the world. So due to their widespread degradation, as mentioned by the uh, video recently, many entities, whether state, states, NGOs, and even local community are acting to ensure conservation. So it is then important to know what the best practice, practices of all kinds of mangrove conservation look like. With us to discuss our topic, there will, there will be two parts. The first, first part will be the presentation uh, which will be given by, the, by our speakers, followed by the question and answer session, uh, which will give opportunity for the participants to submit questions. And we will make sure, uh, put, uh, put a selection of questions to our speaker once they have all, all given the presentation. Second, the second part will be uh, a breakout session and uh, there will be a discussion about our topic. So I would like uh, everyone to take part in it. So to run our first part then, uh, we have three exciting speakers from uh, all around the world. They are going to tell us about the best practice on mangrove conservation, governance and restoration from their country, and also to tell us about how did they involve people in these activities. So for that, uh, I'm very glad then to introduce you our first speaker, who is Rama Rashid uh, Kivogo from Mikoko Pamoja uh, project in Kenya. Just a short bio of Rama. Rama got a BSc in Natural Resources Management uh, from the University of Egerton, Kenya. She is uh, interested in natural resources conservation and management, community development, and marine biodiversity. She also has uh, a professional experience in blue, uh, blue ecosystem conservation renewable energy, sustainable, sustainable and conservation agriculture, and sustainable natural resources management. So today, Rama is going to give us a presentation 
on the best practice in community-led management and conservation as a case of Nikoko Pamoja project. So Rama, if you are already there, so uh, I hand the speech uh, over you. Thank you, Sis Loon, for having me here today. As introduced, my name is Rafa Rashid Kiko. I serve with Data Lake Kamboja Carbon Offset Project as the project coordinator. Um, without further ado, um, next page, please. Next slide. Okay, so Mikoko Kamboja is a Swahili term that means mangroves together. It is the first mangrove uh, payment for ecosystem services project in the world to sustainably engage in the conservation and restoration of mangrove ecosystems by engaging the local community in various interventions that have been put in place. So uh, we basically work to engage the local communities in the conservation and restoration of uh, 117 hectares of mangrove forest that are located in Gaza Bay. And our main objective is the restoration and protection of mangroves through the sale of mangrove carbon credits. We have been verified by the Plant People Foundation to operate for a period of 20 years, uh, having started in the year 2013, and this being our eighth year of operation, and we have managed to um, sustainably contribute to biodiversity conservation, local economic empowerment, as well as um, reversing the effects of climate change. So every year we are able to sequester about 3,000 tons of CO2 equivalent, which generate an annual revenue of about 2.5 million Kenyan shillings. Um, and it is from this amount um, where we are able to contribute to more conservation efforts as well as um, further community development in the communities that we support. Next slide. Now, Mikoko Pamoja's success can be attributed to four factors. We call this our building blocks. We have been having um, constant support from various government agencies, institutions, or first titles uh, related to the activities of the project. Um, we also have um, the existence of carbon bias from the global norm. So we're currently working towards um, gaining more bias um, from um, the local as well as the national perspective. And then we have also been lucky to have a strong research background, uh, both locally and internationally, from various institutions such as the Kenya Marine Fisheries Research Institute, as well as uh, institutions outside Kenya, such as uh, the Edinburgh University. Now, um, all this uh, generally facilitated by the community buy-in that we have been able to get from inception towards um, the current implementation stage that we are in at the moment, and we are hoping to get such post-implementation. And um, in order to promote um, strong engagement and participation by the community members, we need to ensure that we have, we have a lot of um, fairness as well as social justice and accountability in all the project operations that we are engaged in. And some of the ways that Nikopamoja has um, successfully been able to do this is through um, the documentation of free, prior, and informed consent, um, using a participatory approach in our decision-making processes, ensuring recognition and respect of the presence and rights of the locals, uh, having an independent um, auditing process that takes place every five years, um, encouraging transparency in all our operations, in how we disseminate information to the general public, um, allowing access to fair conflict resolution mechanisms, as well as having a benefit sharing structure that basically outlines how resources are to be distributed. Next slide. Next slide, okay. Um, when you're speaking about having a benefit sharing structure, so like I say, this basically outlines how the resources are to be distributed. So we have 6% um, that is usually retained every year uh, to cover the validation process. That is a 
supposed to take place uh, every five years, and um, the other 94% going towards um, covering office expenses, community wages, uh, various project activities, which are inclusive of the mangrove restoration programs, uh, mangrove uh, forest monitoring programs, as well as the nursery establishment programs. And then we have a further 32% that goes directly to benefit the local communities in terms of um, the projects that they have selected to be implemented that year. So um, it is from this practices where we have been able to um, contribute to various international as well as national plans, such as the SDGs. And um, out of 17 SDGs, we are able to benefit both directly and indirectly to 15 of, of these SDGs. An example is um, the SDG 1, uh, 4, 6, 7, 13, 14, 15, as well as 17, which we are able to directly contribute to. And when you're speaking in regards to indirect uh, benefits to this uh, sustainable development goals, then we're speaking about matters such as um, gender equity, as well as uh, providing an innovation or tool, an innovation tool, sorry, for replication in other regions of the world. And um, among our achievements has been uh, the winning of the Equator Prize in, in 2017, which basically recognizes community efforts towards conservation. We have also been able to serve as a replication tool um, to similar projects across the world. We have the Tahiri Hong Kong, which was um, showcased at the start of this session, as well as our own extension of Mikoko Pamoja that has been developed further south of Kenya in a project known as Vanga Bay, which is actually four times bigger than Moja. And this means that it will be able to generate more benefit to biodiversity, the local uh, communities, as well as um, climate change. We have also been able to contribute to um, national policies, as well as international policies, such as the National Mangrove Management Plan, as well as the recent um, incorporation of blue carbon ecosystem, and in particular the mangrove uh, forest in our recently updated indices. Next slide. Okay, no project lacks challenges, but it is how we address them and overcome them that matters. So among our challenges is um, we still we are still facing some illegal harvesting of the mangroves within our coverage area, as well as outside uh, uh, um, areas beyond our coverage. And uh, we have a national ban on the harvesting of mangroves that basically um, um, puts a stop to the exploitation of this resource, which is very handy in terms of further reducing the rate of exploitation of um, it, the mangrove ecosystems. Another challenge we are facing is the volatility of the voluntary carbon market. We find that sometimes um, the cells can be good and sometimes the cells cannot be good. So um, we are lucky that we, we are kind of noticing a change in um, the lucrative nature of uh, the carbon market and that um, currently we are seeing to more indirect uh, buyers coming to us rather than direct uh, buyers in the form of um, institutions or organizations. So we are currently dealing with more uh, middlemen or B2Bs coming to seek for um, services in carbon offsetting. So definitely um, this can be both good and bad, but always focus on the positivity of this in that um, it shows that more people are into, are into carbon offsetting and which makes um, the carbon market more lucrative. And so uh, I think it is the right step in the right direction. And again, uh, um, another challenge that we face is the lack of meeting planting targets, which makes the project miss out on some of the payments that we're supposed to be receiving. We know that restoration activities as part of the Coco Pamoja project is supposed to generate as a total of um, 2% of the total amount of money that we are 
able to generate every year. So um, it is from the lack of meeting the targets that have been set, which is Mikoko um, is supposed to um, restrict an area of 0 0.4 hectares every, every year, which constitutes of about 4,000 seedlings um, in that area. So um, currently, we are also looking into employing um, alternative methods of restoration um, by engaging both our researchers as well as the local communities in these activities. Next slide. Our future aspirations, um, we are looking to contributing more into the national and international policies related to um, different activities of the project. Uh, again, uh, also looking uh, to serving as a center of excellence for uh, knowledge purposes, for skills purposes, whether it's to organizations, companies, institutions, or individuals interested um, in the various activities that are involved in the project. We are also looking into supporting more energy saving stores. Um, we have done this so far, but on, uh, on a very small scale, and we wish to um, do more of the same because it's actually contributing to our mitigation strategy. And so um, we are currently um, looking forward to conducting an assessment on the efficiency of the distributed stoves, which uh, from the information that will be, I mean, from the information that will be gathered, we'll be able to do more in terms of impacting um, the local communities. And again, we are looking into the inclusion of the seagrass ecosystems uh, as part of our conservation ecosystem. I mean, as part of our conservation uh, processes, rather. And um, we know that the seagrasses and the mangroves are very interlinked um, ecosystems. And by doing so, we will be able to generate um, maximum benefit from the conservation of both ecosystems using a, a bundling approach. So that is all from Ecopo Promoja. In case of any questions, kindly forward them to me, and I will do my best in answering them. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Rama, for this uh, clear presentation, although there was like a bad internet from your side. It was very clear. Thank you very much. And um, from this presentation, uh, it is highlighted that uh, they put community uh, in the center of interest. Why? Because they promote social justice, accountability, transparency, gender equity through FPIC. And uh, uh, Rama also uh, mentioned some challenges like under delineation, national ban, and lack of inco income uh, diversification. So uh, these uh, will transition us then to the next speaker, uh, who is uh, Zhu and Mahen uh, from Blue Ventures Madagascar. Yeah, uh, Zhu is a regional advisor for uh, governance and also a geospatial te technician for Blue Ventures. Uh, for the last decade, Zhu has been uh, working uh, with local fisher fishermen across Madagascar to ensure that they receive the necessary support uh, to sustainably manage their natural resources, both uh, in mangroves and uh, fisheries over this time. He has also developed uh, a deep understanding of what support coastal community do and don't need. And uh, Zhu is a strong advocate for power of indigenous knowledge and participatory resources management. So uh, today, uh, Zhu is going to give us a presentation on uh, the mangrove governance in Simipaika Bay of, of uh, Northwest of Madagascar. So, Zhu, the uh, floor is yours. What happened in the southwest, northwest of Madagascar? Okay. Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you, Cicela. Uh, first of all, I want to share you uh, the situation before the, the installation of uh, Blue Ventures in this uh, region. Uh, please, we can go to the next slide. Okay, as you see on the photo, 
uh, between 2000 to 2014, there is a huge and a uh, high rate of mangrove deforestation in this area, around 44 uh, percent per year of loss of mangrove uh, charcoal. This is due to uh, illegal mangrove deforestation and also due to the community, some of the community based management has been abandoned before uh, their um, implementation by the government uh, around 2000. And also, and also, there's a less motivation of local community and uh, no ownership from them. What we have, uh, uh, what we use as approach and activity, uh, starting to 2013 to support this community. First, it is really, really important to consult the community for every decision and uh, for uh, for every information that we want to share that work that we want to collect uh, from this uh, community. So the community consultation is really important, which we could also the approach uh, participative approach in decision uh, making. What also we do is uh, in order uh, to put a strong, um, uh, how to say, it, a strong uh, community uh, based management or association, we have to support them by building capacity and uh, provide a different training such as uh, leadership, association management. Um, community patrols, developing an action plan, and uh, its uh, implementation. Uh, also, we, uh, in next slide, we try also to uh, do awareness raising uh, to the adults, but also to the kids. So for the kids, um, they can already prepare uh, to, to their future in, in terms of uh, natural resource uh, management. And uh, in the next slide, uh, please. As a result from the support that we gave to this community, so uh, in uh, 2014, we have been uh, put in place 13 legal management structures uh, that manage over 6,000 hect hectares of, uh, of uh, coastlines. And as I mentioned, this uh, community, uh, we support this community to uh, decide what kind of management measures they want to to put uh, and they want to to apply in their in their area. This management measures also. Uh, uh, reply to their needs and the reply to the um, uh, their local context. And uh, today, they have uh, four uh, priorities uh, management measures. For example, no entrance to uh, the conservation zones, um, uh, no mangrove charcoals, respect of uh, uh, mangrove and fisheries uh, reserves and also uh, the respect of the minimum uh, fish uh, uh, fish size uh, for, for catching. Um, we supported this community also, as I said, to, uh, to do your, car, your, your patrols and now they have autonomy to do a community patrols which is going uh, systematically, uh, the same thing for uh, surveillance. Uh, also, if before this community, they didn't have any motivation or they didn't have any plan to do mangrove reforestation, but now they have uh, the autonomy to organize a mangrove restoration uh, and mangrove uh, reforestation. And about the awareness raising and environmental education, this uh, community, they are able now to um, conduct an environmental education to the kids and do awareness raising to, uh, with, uh, 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 with the villagers. 
However, we still have a challenge for this uh, community. First, the law enforcement. This is really, uh, really a big uh, challenge for this community. When I say law enforcement, there is uh, also uh, be called the here Dina, uh, which is a, a local uh, kind of local uh, convention. Uh, the decision is from this community, uh, the, the community itself. But sometimes, due to the social life, we call the Firahamun, uh, and uh, also uh, due to the to different pressures, they they still have a issue on applying the uh, this uh, local uh, law or uh, or dina, but. In other hands, there is the, uh, the, the the national law also, which the, the enforcement is uh, doesn't uh, reply to the needs of this community. So sometimes there's still a corruption, and sometimes um, uh, there is still a injustice on applying this national law related to the uh, natural uh, resource uh, management. The other uh, uh, challenge also is we don't have yet the, the right alternative for mangrove uh, charcoal uh, uh, production because some of the area in uh, in the Tsimpeke Bay, they're still using a mangrove charcoal, charcoal for, for, for cooking. Whereas uh, even if a Blue Ventures uh, supported community to put uh, alternative uh, on uh, on this uh, mangrove charcoal. It's it's still not enough for the entire of the of the bay. So that's why I'm saying that it's still uh, a big challenge for us to find another alternative for uh, mangrove uh, charcoal. So that's in generally uh, my presentation, and I hope that. Uh, from these different pictures uh, you can understand also uh, what i have said but um, as uh, the facilitator says uh, if we do have a question uh, you can uh, we can put it on the on the text box and uh, we we'll try to reply on it uh, thank you for for listening to me and thank you uh, i will pass to to Cicela. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you are on time and uh, thank you for this interesting uh, presentation. So, um, uh, Zhu uh, mentioned again that it's important to involve community in the whole process of the project implementation. So they use uh, lots of approaches that uh, uh, involve community. So as a result of uh, this, um, <clears throat> They put in place strong local governance for mangroves and also uh, there was uh, community uh, autonomy uh, especially in, in in terms of patrolling and also in terms of uh, leading mangrove restoration so um, as the same as uh, the first presentation uh, done by rama uh, there is also like uh, the same challenges that uh, the two countries face so there is the national ban for mangroves, which uh, does not allow uh, traditional right use. And also the lack of alternatives uh, with more uh, specification in wood in Madagascar. And uh, also another challenge is uh, the law enforcement at the local level due to the uh, friendship and family. So uh, now, I'm going then to uh, introduce you uh, our last uh, speaker, uh, Laura Michi, uh, who is from Mangrove Action Project. She's based in uh, UK. And uh, Laura is a marine biologist and science communicator who uh, joined Mangrove uh, Action Project as a communication specialist last year. She has a PhD from the University of uh, Portsmouth in the UK and has over 10 years experience working in mangrove and coastal wetlands. So uh, today 
uh, Laura is going to tell us about the community-based ecological restoration from Thailand and uh, the related alternative livelihoods. So the floor is yours, uh, Laura. Hi there, um, I hope you can all hear me. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about our community-based ecological mangrove restoration um, at Mangrove Action Project. Uh, could I have the next slide, please? So community-based ecological mangrove restoration, or CBEMR for short, um, works with nature um, and takes into account mangrove ecology and biology to restore degraded mangroves by mimicking natural processes. So the best reason for using natural processes is that um, nature does it best. Um, so planting is very difficult um, and must be done correctly to work. Um, but with natural regeneration, the right tree species end up in the right place um, at the right tidal height, um, and it result, results in a much more biodiverse mangrove forest um, that's more resilient to climate change, to disease, um, and to pollution. So it's also potentially more economical for local communities or NGOs as it avoids the cost of nurseries um, and planting out trees. Um, so our CBMR process starts with a detailed investigation of the restoration site to understand the previous reasons for mangrove losses um, or why mangroves aren't naturally regenerating themselves. And we work with communities right from the start to understand why the mangroves um, need to be restored um, and the best route forward for mangrove restoration. Um, and CBMR encourages local communities to conserve and restore their mangroves um, and to use them sustainably. Um, so in this model, the mangroves are as vital to the community as the community is to the mangroves. Uh, next slide, please. So the key to CBMR method is involving communities at every stage of the process. Um, and this increases their capacity to take stewardship of the local environment. Um, so when we start a CBMR project, we always have extensive discussions with communities before we start the training. Um, and it's really important for us to understand the social factors that might inhibit mangrove regeneration. So things like land tenure, the site usage, site history, uh, what restoration attempts may have been tried already, um, and other, other relevant socioeconomic factors such as livelihoods that may impact the mangroves. So monitoring and training workshops are held regularly throughout um, all of our CBMR projects um, and that ensures that su successful restoration will occur whilst also developing sustainable and locally led conservation initi initiatives uh, to benefit the communities um, and also take pressure off existing mangroves. Um, so this Empowering process creates a sense of ownership um, and ensures that restoration processes will not be short lived, um, but instead will continue on sustainably into the future. So we monitor restoration long term, staying in touch to ensure that interventions work um, and that social agreements are adhered to. Next slide, please. So we've been working with communities along the Andaman coast since 2012. Um, and in 2014, we first went to the village of Nai Nang. We've been working with Nai Nang since then on restoration and alternative livelihoods to help them revive their lost mangroves and also to bring back the many benefits that the mangroves provide. So we first began working with the community to restore mangroves to abandoned shrimp ponds. Um, so this is a huge issue in Southeast Asia. Uh, many mangroves are cut down to make way for shrimp aquaculture. Ponds are created to grow shrimp. And then after a few years, these, these ponds can become toxic and full of disease. So they then become abandoned. Um, and it's then very difficult to regrow mangroves um, in these areas because the site is, is too degraded. Um, so the objective is to restore the hydrology by digging channels um, and to imitate nature which will then uh, bring mangrove seeds on the tide um, and then it will also allow the water to fully drain like the mangrove would have done originally. Um, and before restoration workshops, we always meet with villagers for in-depth discussions 
um, on project objectives uh, and to agree who will be carrying out the work um, and how the benefits of restoration will then be shared among the community. Um, so our aim is to work alongside the communities to teach them the best methods to restore their mangroves um, and to empower them to do so independently. So we've developed a long-term partnership um, with communities on the Andaman coast, and now a chain of communities have gathered together um, as an informal network, calling themselves the CBMR network, um, to share and present their knowledge of CBMR to other communities um, and to NGOs and to the government as well. Next slide, please. So following that initial training, um, some of the villagers in Nainang observed bees pollinating the mangrove trees. Um, so a few families began experimenting with beekeeping um, and by building bee boxes and placing them close to the mangrove forest, they actually um, helped improve the restoration efforts. So that suggested to us that honey production might be a really good sustainable alternative livelihood for Nainang. So as a result, we began beekeeping training for the community um, and provided bee making equipment, uh, beehive making equipment, which then led to the creation um, of a local enterprise called the Nainang Apiculture Group. Uh, we helped to implement sustainable beekeeping practices, including a reduction in pesticide use. Um, and then that facilitated healthy native bee populations and the production of raw honey. Um, and then also promotes mangrove conservation as well. So developing alternative livelihoods can be incredibly challenging for rural communities, um, but this aquaculture programme offers an income to the local people without them relying on destructive and unsustainable practices in the mangroves. And today, nearly 40 beekeeping families um, are who would normally depend on mangrove exploitation um, and small scale fishing are supported by this initiative. Um, and they actually produce up to 300 kilograms of honey every year. Um, they have 1,200 beehives um, and they contain 800 colonies um, of wild bee um, and also 60 hives of stingless bee. Um, and this has been such a success um, that they've also started creating several other enterprises um, including a women's group, as you can see in these pictures here. Um, and they use that honey to create value added products. So things like hand soaps, shampoos and balms from the honey to then sell on as well. Um, and this is a really exciting initiative, um, which we're continuing to develop with communities um, with the help of Nainang as well. Um, and we're hoping to carry this on into the future to restore their mangrove forests and help them create these sustainable livelihoods. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Laura, for this uh, presentation. Yeah, uh, it presented a new approach, which is, which is not far from what the two uh, presenters, because uh, the approach involves a community and uh, it's uh, through using this approach, uh, it promotes ownership of the, the conservation project uh, for the community and also promote a loc locally led uh, initiative. So um, the challenge is a bit uh, different from what have been presented uh, before. Uh, shrimp aquaculture is uh, the most uh, challenge that they are facing there, which is not uh, much happening in the two countries. So um, for um, to help the community just to uh, to you improve their uh, restoration uh, efforts, uh, this uh, project uh, promotes uh, alternative uh, livelihoods uh, as beekeeping. And uh, we saw in the presentation that the, pro the beekeeping project uh, goes well so uh, that's all for the presentation. So now we are going to move to the, the question sessions from the participants. And I hope there are many questions from your sides. So it's time to, um, to, put, uh, to ask questions from, uh, if you would like to uh, ask questions for our three speakers. 
Okay, so um, there is one question for Rama from the audience. So can you please repeat the amount of funding generated annually in uh, Kenya shilling? That's a question. From, Approximately, yeah. From the 3,000 tons of CO2 equivalent that we are able to sequester annually, uh, this turns to a tune of approximately 2.5 million Kenyan shillings, which is approximately 25,000 US dollars every year. Okay, thank you, uh, Rama. So another question um, goes to uh, Laura. So what is uh, what is species of the bees used for beekeeping? Is it all local species? Uh, yes, it is all local species. I can't remember the exact species off the top of my head, but they are all local. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. So another question for Zhu. Have you ever experienced a conflicts between communities? If you have, how have you supported them to solve this problem? Yes, of course, we, we had this uh, many times, but uh, the approach that uh, you've used to, to solve this problem is first to organize a meeting of the local authority, like a mayor, the chief of the village, and um, you try to find a solution on the problems, but uh, uh, and uh, and uh, for example, in in other villages, uh, there's a conflict uh, between uh, uh, the, del uh, the delimitation of uh, of the area uh, that they they want to manage, and they, they we we we've been organized a meeting with the mayor, the the, the government, and. Uh, and uh, uh, finally, we had we had the chance to 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 solve the problems. Yeah, thank you very much. To, uh, another additional questions for Rama: What measures can be used to address negative criticism that blue carbon projects are exploiting local communities rather than benefit them? Okay, thank you for this question. And like I mentioned before, um, as a project, you are constantly supposed to um, show test that you're being fair and just as well as account main accountable in, in your project operations. And I think um, up from my presentation, I've been able to showcase some, something like um, the benefit sharing structure that we are able to use to I mean, to show how the resources are located across um, all project-related activities, we are also able to um, seek prior consent. Like I mentioned, for the case of Nick Moja, that was um, that was the case before inception, and now that we are working towards um, the incorporation of the sea classical systems into um, our conservation program. We are also doing the same consultations with the communities. Um, we are also seeking to um, constantly um, promote the sustainability of the project in terms of uh, the contribution to the uh, community livelihoods as well as um, the sustainability of the project operations. Thank you. I think that answers the, the question. But stay there, uh, Rama, you still have questions. <laughs> so are there also beekeeping activities or plan to develop this alternative in Mikokopamuja and or in Fanga Bay? Yeah. Okay, um, currently there are none, but initially we used to have some bee, I mean, bee farming which is happening within Mikokopamuja. But I guess um, some issues happened and people decided to do away with that um, incentive at that particular moment. But uh, um, we are closely um, collaborating with the farm, of, I mean, Blue Forest Project uh, towards reviving such an incentive for the local community. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Laura, the question is for you. How long did it take to see, to see sign of reforestation using artificial 
artificial channel. Does it need a special structure with regard to species composition of the initial mangrove population? Um, so the the beauty of using natural regeneration is that the species will that come back are the species that are naturally there anyway. Um, and so you to dig the channels, um, you need to replicate what nature would have done um, to bring back the water and the tides into the mangrove forests. Um, and then the seeds will will come in with those tides. So it's it's very dependent on the site of how quickly you'll see regeneration happening. Um, but in terms of special structures, as long as you can dig those channels and as long as you can create the environment for the seedlings to settle, um, then you will start seeing restoration take place. Thank you and stay there. Another question for you, Laura. Are there any guidelines to collect baselines from uh, for the first steps of uh, CDMR? meaning understanding the drivers of laws in the area considered, history of site, uh, example, species, something like that. Do you understand the question? Uh, yeah, so in terms of collecting um, baseline data, um, it's best to do assessments of nearby mangroves to see what species are there naturally um, and where those species are living. Um, and in terms of understanding the drivers of loss, the best people to talk to is the community or local NGOs or the government um, or whoever the participants might be in our CBMR projects to actually understand, you know, the history of the site and, and why the mangroves were lost and how it's best to move forward with restoration. Thank you very much, Laura. So we have a final question for you. Your work in Ambanja region has clearly had a very positive impact on communities' capacity to manage mangroves in the, in the region. What are we doing to ensure that the community associations are independent in the long term and not reliant uh, on BV, uh, from BV forever? That's the question. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So... It's uh, first um, to ensure that uh, this community uh, will be independent in long term. It's 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 required a long process, and uh, there's lots of things that uh, we have to be considered uh, in this uh, process. First, we have to ensure that all uh, skills that uh, PV technician, for example, uh, has been transferred. Uh, uh progressively to this uh to this uh, local uh community uh for example uh before it was the role of preventers to do a reforestation monitoring but now uh in simpeka b this uh, community are able to conduct the reforestation uh monitoring uh the same thing uh, for uh, mangrove uh, patchers, they are always um, supported uh, by blue ventures uh, uh, financially uh, to conduct the mangrove patchers. But uh, some of this community now, they 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 paid uh, the association paid to the patchers uh, like it's like uh, not really like. Uh, uh, a salary, but uh, something that they can't buy for food or like a small remuneration, so uh, the patrolists can continue uh, uh, to do the uh, mangrove uh, patrols. And also, the I think the base uh, uh, is the, the behavior change and the ownership uh, sense. So this, uh, how we can ensure this, we our technician uh, is always working on environmental education and on awareness raising uh, every day, every day. So it's 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 become like a daily uh, a daily work of uh, of all of our technicians. So every time they go to the field, uh, 
there is like an ordinary session, but the extra, uh, extra, uh, there is an extraordinary session also for uh, a behavioral change. So we will always uh, exchanging with them, uh, we will always uh, doing uh, awareness uh, raising uh, with them. And also, a big thing is uh, the, the visit exchange uh, between them, but also we are trying to bring them to another uh, area so they can see what other people uh, is uh, doing. And uh, the other thing is Blue Ventures are trying uh, to find other opportunity uh, in terms of funds uh, or a small grants so this community uh, uh, can manage these uh, small grants. And uh, in the same time, we are providing a training uh, support uh, on uh, on a small grant uh, uh, on small grant management, but as I say uh, before, it's still a long process and uh, it's uh, requested uh, a lot uh, uh, lots of times. So I can say yet if it's in 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 three years or four years that it depends on the things that I've mentioned before. Hope that uh, this will <laughs> answer the question. Yeah, thank you very much, Sue, for the prompt responses. I, and uh, I hope uh, all the questions are addressed by our uh, speakers. So uh, now, if there's any question, uh, we are going to move to our next session. Uh, which is a breakout session uh, and uh, I would like to thank uh, everyone uh, for joining the first uh, part. So now we are going to uh, have our breakout discussion. Uh, so to do that, um, uh, just uh, a technical instruction. Um, uh, what all you need is just to do uh, find a seat at the table uh, which matters the language group uh, you wish to join and uh, click a seat next to the table of your choice and um, we will have uh, 20 minutes for this uh, discussion session so uh, I invite again everyone uh, to take part in this and uh, and uh, looking forward to hearing uh, from your side Good luck.